Alright, hey guys, this video is for CC Cycle 3, week 20 of Orchestra. Um, this week we're talking about Peter Tchaikovsky and his last symphony, Symphony Number no. 6, the fourth movement. So um, you can either go through your vocabulary on page 191 in your foundations guide, 191. Um, or you can work it in with your lesson, however you want to do it. But make sure you go over the vocabulary. So um, I'll just go over it with you now, um, but I like to kind of work it into my lesson and talk about it as I get there rather than reading off vocabulary to them. But I'll go over it with you now real quick. So we have Adagio Lamentoso, so a slow lament. It's like um, a slow wailing, a slow crying, mourning. So we already know right off the bat this song is going to be sad. <laughs> And um, descending scale, so that's, um, it says in the book, playing consecutive notes from right side to the left side of the piano. So we are going, we're getting, the notes are getting ba, 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 we're getting lower, we're getting lower. And you'll see how that comes into play to send across the message that he was writing in this symphony. Uh, fortissimo, we kind of covered that in Ten Whistle with Forte. This is the same thing, it's just very, very strong, very loud. Uh, crescendo, we covered that in Tin Whistle also, like it's growing, the music's getting louder and louder and louder, so go over that. Um, first and second violin, so we were talking about, the, when you had orchestra set up, if you look at the pictures, you had like the first and the second violins, and um, so they would, play, they would play different parts and work together. In this particular piece, they do something that, that composers use sometimes, so when we have that um, descending scale where we're going down, it's actually to get that stereo surround sound type feel. They would have this side playing, they would alternate on notes. So it was like ba, 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 like that whenever you were listening to it. Um, so talk about, talk about that. Like I said, you can either introduce all this vocabulary in the beginning or you can work it into your lesson just as you go. Um, and then if you turn, go ahead and just turn to page 192 in your foundations guide. And, um, and then we were also in, so the things that, they're, they're, that CC want you to do, well, first of all, I'm going to go over the vocabulary and um, a little bit about Peter Tchaikovsky and a little bit about this piece before I play it. So I'm going to work that into my lesson. You can do it in whatever order that you want. Um, you'll, but you'll see there. This is why I'm, I'm skipping ahead. You'll see that it says at the, at the end of the lesson right there, ask the students if they can hear that it is in a minor key, and how does that make them feel as they listen? Um, romantic music should invoke emotion. What emotions do they feel as they listen? So the reason I skipped ahead is just to let you know why I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Um, go ahead and talk about major and minor. Um, talk about the romantic period again, how it was full of emotion. You can see my last video on that. Week 19, when we're introducing the romantic period, we're talking about how that was more about emotions. So um, I am... I guess I'll just go ahead and start off with, first of all, major and minor. This is not the expert explanations. <laughs> I'm just, I don't want to overwhelm anybody with more vocabulary than you're just digging yourself deeper. But in major and minor, these are tools that like composers used, um, like they would, to, to give the right feeling to the music is what I'm trying to explain to you. So you have major, you've got minor, and they're using different combinations of notes. I'm just trying to give you the, the surface summary here. Don't get overwhelmed with this. So they use different combinations of notes, like if they're going like to the next note or if they're skipping a note. But basically what you need to know for your class is that the easiest way to listen to it and be able to tell is major is like light, happy, bright, sunny. It's making you feel good. You got good memories. And um, with minor, it's going to feel like dark, gloomy, sad, depressing. That's how the notes are going to make you feel. And they use these combinations, major and minor, to get the right feeling with their music. It's really awesome. Anyways, um, so that's just kind of the difference between major and minor. So bring that up and let them listen to this because the whole thing is in minor, except there is one section where you hear more major and it's a tiny little piece of like good memories and the rest of the song is just so sad and depressing. So 
Um, so I went over the vocabulary a little bit with you guys. Touch on that for as little as long as you want in your lesson. Just make sure we keep it within the 30 minutes. Um, so you could, you know, ask them for examples or, I don't know, create a scenario if you want with the vocabulary. But just make sure you really drill that vocabulary, like I said, either in a list in the beginning or work it through your lesson. And then also talk about a little bit about um, Tchaikovsky. His name was Peter Tchaikovsky. He was born in Russia in 1840. He led a very interesting life. A lot of it you're not going to want to talk to your students about. Um, you know, like his mother dying. He went through a divorce. Like he, he was married for like a few weeks and went through this divorce and it, it made him even more depressed. Um, but so just find some really cool, interesting facts about Peter Tchaikovsky. You could talk about um, at the age of six, he knew how to read and write French and German. So he was very, very intelligent. His family was not like musically oriented though. So they were raising him to be, I think, a lawyer. Um, but they, that they did not have him in any kind of music. He didn't really start studying music until his early, early 20s. But they noticed at a very early age he had a talent for this. He had perfect pitch, which is so rare. So um, let's see what else. He did come to, he did visit America in 1891. Um, and then soon after that, actually, 1891, 1892, is when he did the Nutcracker. And very popular here. Everyone kind of knows. Once you, if you say Peter Tchaikovsky, everyone's like, I don't know who that is. And it's like the composer of the Nutcracker. And then everyone's like, Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so he did the Nutcracker, Swan Lake. So he's very, very famous here. He actually didn't even like the Nutcracker. Uh, he was very critical of that. He wasn't even big, a big fan. It wasn't one of his favorite pieces. So, um, and then just talk a little bit about this symphony, Symphony Number no. Six. We're on the fourth movement. Now, this symphony was his last one when this was played for the very first time and heard for the very like performed for the very first time. He actually died nine days later. So um, he he died shortly after this. So you can so reading about his life, you, you see like he had all these terrible things. It was just he was always like depressed and having these issues. And right before he dies, he writes this piece, and you can, as an adult, I don't think the kids will notice as much. I just say it's, like, sad and gloomy, but um, as an adult, learning all of that about him and then listening to this, it's like, gosh, this is, <laughs> he was, like, really depressed, like, really sad and going through some stuff. Um, when my son listens to this piece, he always says, I feel like I'm at a funeral, so <laughs> I think he feels the sadness, too. And that's good. The romantic period it was all about just that emotion. And so you will hear in this song, you know, the frustration, the depression, the sadness. It's almost like somebody is just slowly dying because it's like it, it's soft and it kind of dies off. It gets louder and it kind of dies off a little bit too. So what I like to do is I like to go over the vocabulary, talk about the composer, talk about this piece. Just give them little, little pieces, whatever you feel is appropriate for whatever audience you're talking to. If it's the little ones, you know, maybe make it short and light right to the point. If it's the older ones, maybe you could slip them a few details, you know. Um, anyway, uh, so go over that, go over this, a little bit about the symphony. And then what I like to do is I play it for them and I keep pausing it and I keep asking them, you know, what instruments do you hear? Do you hear the crescendo? I talk about all of that. And then um, once I go, once I walk them through the whole entire thing, I start it over, but they just have a piece of paper in front of them, and they're just they're just listening, and they're just drawing how it makes them feel, which I think is a, a really good activity. So um, that's really all that I do, and then I go right into the orchestra song. We sing that all together. We have like our little instrument puppets, and we just go through the orchestra song, and then that's it. That's the 30 minutes. It's very, very easy. So really, um, like I said, just start off with vocabulary, a little bit about Peter Tchaikovsky and this piece. Dissect the piece, let them draw in color. If, you, if you're in a classroom by yourself with a bunch of four-year-olds, maybe you want to listen to half of it and talk about crescendo and like, do you hear that? Do you hear the strings? Um, but if you're in a master's class, go, go through and dissect the whole piece as much or as little as you want. And then just let them color and listen, you know, see how they feel. So it doesn't leave a lot of room for vocabulary. Um, in history, it doesn't leave too much because this piece, I think, is almost 10 minutes long. So playing that twice, that's 20 minutes right there. Um, so feel free to maybe just dissect half of it or have them color while you're dissecting it if you would like. Um, I just kind of run through the vocabulary and then have the orchestra song at the end. Not a lot of extra time with these long um, pieces. So um, 
that's really about it. If you want to hear me go through the song, you can stay tuned. The video is already like at 10 minutes and then we got 10 more minutes. So if this is good for you, you can sign off now. But I'll go through the piece now. Just I'll go through a little bit of it to help you. Now, in your foundations guide where it says to get out the classical music for dummies, page 154 and 156, that's not correct. That's next week um, for Debussy. But um, Tchaikovsky is on page 152 and 153. So what you'll do is get get out this um, the CD or if you do it online, which what, however you do it. If you have the CD, it's number it's number seven on the CD. And what you want to do is they have it written out for you, like what minute and second you're at and what's going on. Some of this I use for my class and some I don't. Like sometimes I feel you know in the future I feel like some of the pieces it's so soft you can barely hear it the inner room like that they just can't they just can't hear those tiny little pieces or sometimes I feel like some of it is they're just not gonna get it so sometimes I use what they have to say right here and sometimes I find my own things I just pause it and I say what instruments do you hear do you hear percussion and strings and horns and all that all that kind of thing so um, so what you, that's what you do you get out this I would just advise you to like listen, like listen to it without looking at anything. Just listen to it. See what you pick up. What do you notice? And then maybe you can read this as you listen to it. Some of this stuff you'll hear, and some you just won't. Um, I like to, I like to just sit and listen to it, and uh, and pause it, and talk to my class, and keep them engaged. So I'll start it now, and then walk you guys through a piece of that. So, um, so this is symphony number six the fourth movement. So right away what we hear are the strings and we hear that descending scale where it's ba 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 just getting the notes are getting lower we have that descending scale going on. you can hear some horns so through this you'll hear a lot of the strings in the woodwinds playing that tune that descending scale and and you'll hear like horns or a bassoon in the back doing that wailing crying sobbing sound um, that's what that's that was that's what it was written to sound like You can ask them what's going on in the music. The answer is crescendo. You can um, pause this throughout, ask them what instruments they hear. what the book refers to it like as an outburst so it's like we went down really really quiet and then we're going to go up like crescendo just all of a sudden and then you'll you'll hear it it's just going to die back down to nothing all over again where you kind of want to have them listening out for pretty soon it's going to switch for just a short time period from minor to major so you'll hear you know it's sad it's gloomy but then you'll hear a tiny little piece where it's like a little bit of happiness in there 
<laughs> like a little bit of hope, and then that go it dies back down into minor again. should hear the switch to major just a few seconds. That piece right there is where I switched a little bit. It was like a little bit of like these happy notes, happy tunes. So see if you can get them. They may not, or they might just be like, what? No, I don't hear that at all. But see if you can get them to, to tune their ear into that. Right here we have a crescendo coming up and what's going to happen for like the next where are we at 247 so for the next minute or two we're going to keep hearing um crescendos going into fortissimo um over and over again and it's like it'll crescendo and crescendo and crescendo and crescendo until finally it's just like fortissimo there's like three f's written on there it's really really loud so just Give them a heads up of that if you, if you want, maybe each time it crescendos, or just like tell them now and have them listen for it. Also, that um, horn that you hear that's almost like trying to do the same thing as the violins, those are trombones. You could point that out to them if you want. But yeah, those are some trombones that are like doing that. They're playing like almost the same melody as the violins. keep getting louder and louder until we're at that like the climax of the song. we've got brass the horns we've got strings we've got woodwinds just everybody just it's like really really loud they're all crying and yelling as loud as they can <laughs> halfway but that's basically what you want to do um, you can read through this 
you can listen to it yourself, um, whatever you want to do, a little bit of both, and just find those moments. Keep pausing it and keep asking them, like, what instruments do you hear? Did you hear the crescendo? Did you hear that little section of, of major? And now we're back to minor. Um, just get them involved. They may, they may really not hear it, but some kids really might be catching on to this. So just draw attention to it. Um, keep pausing it. And then, like I said, if you want, maybe leave some time for them to be coloring. Um, and that's basically it. And just wrap up with your orchestra song. Um, review maybe any vocabulary if you have a few extra minutes. Uh, week 23 and 24, I like to do like a little pop quiz um, and just kind of review what we have done. You'll see that we're going to review composers. We're going to review the symphonies that we did. So I like to do like a little pop quiz and ask them questions about what I've gone over to see uh, what they remember. So it's kind of fun. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But that's that's the basics. Just have fun combining history and music together and just enjoying this, this piece together, hearing what you can. If you don't hear it, that's fine too. So let me know if you guys have any questions, guys. Enjoy. <laughs>